Hi guys, welcome back to Wheel of Beard Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Juggernaut Issue 4, written by Fabian Nicesia with art by Ron Garney. Now, one of the things I have absolutely loved about this series is how it is kind of tweaking the character of Juggernaut, just advancing that character forward past his villainous past and uh, making him a new character, kind of bringing him out of um, where he has been previously and making him a new man. And this issue continues that. He's actually, in a sort of way, confronting his own uh, past of abuse and being the father figure or mentor that he never really had uh, himself because he grew up in an abusive home. And so in this issue, seeing him kind of take on that fatherly mentor role to decel is absolutely amazing. The book doesn't really call it out. Um, there's no, uh, you know, big speech about it or anything but you can see it in his actions and that's something that I really really love about this also uh, in here he has a conversation with Saitorak and basically says I'm not going to be your implement of destruction anymore and literally walks away from him so kind of continuing him his evol character evolution away from who he was in the past and kind of his classic villain role is absolutely fantastic and I really really do love it on top of that there's this kind of undercurrent of conspiracy like there's someone that has like this called the dungeon and kind of like the raft or something like that where there is this for-profit supervillain prison where um, it looks like like the prisoners are being abused and made to do things through telepathy or mind control or something to that effect. It's what uh, the character Quicksand was doing in the previous issue, so that's kind of odd. I don't know if that part of the story is as developed as I would like. It feels maybe a smidge afterthoughty, but I'm enjoying the character development of Juggernaut enough that I'm going to let it slide. So let's go ahead here and jump into the pages here for Juggernaut issue number four. All right, I love this panel uh, right here with just Juggernaut yeeting himself out of the back of a, of a helicopter there, uh, kind of being a bunker buster because he just uses his bullet head uh, to just dive right in and break through to this uh, underground bunker. I, I absolutely love it. You know, it just reminds me of uh, very classic um, tropes or things we've seen a lot in both comics and in, in the movies. I think it was um, The Ultimates Volume 1. I think it was Mark. Miller and I can't remember who uh, Millar and I can't remember who did the artwork on that but I think it was Captain America threw Bruce Banner out of a helicopter above New York when some aliens were attacking uh, to force him to turn into the Hulk which we saw um, kind of referenced humorously in Thor Ragnarok where Bruce jumped out of the spaceship onto the rainbow bridge and just kind of landed which was hilarious um, and then of course Captain America diving out of the uh, the um, the airplane or the helicarrier, um, what, what, uh, Quinjet, there we go. I'll get the right word here in a minute. Um, in uh, the beginning of Captain America, the Winter Soldier. So I just love, you know, superheroes jumping out of things. It's uh, it's really cool. So uh, he dives in there, and of course, uh, D-Cell is still live streaming this whole thing. Uh, I don't know how she's getting away with that, because this has to be some sort of official mission. It'd be like if, like, you know, a SEAL team was, like, had their, like, you know, Twitch stream up on, like, a chest GoPro or something it's like you just don't do that like no I don't I, 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 I guess she's is live streaming and maybe she's just recording it for posterity later but still this is maybe not the kind of thing that needs to end up on YouTube but it's kind of that who the character is so again we'll just we'll just kind of let it slide I don't love it but um but we'll let it slide here and so as she's filming, she's giving commentary here, and she says, And now someone's about uh, five minutes away from getting their ass cheeks introduced to the inside of their mouth cheeks. <laughs> and then Juggernaut's like, D-Cell, shut up and cut off my mic feed. That joke didn't even make sense. And she's like, don't listen to him. A jug, you'll uh, hit him hard. Their bones will invert. I, I don't know what inverting your bones looks like, uh, and I don't want to know <laughs> what it looks like. So uh, as he's down there, something uh, starts attacking him it's whatever this character is uh that's here on the cover i kind of thought at first glance it was something uh, a character associated with the symbiotes uh over there in spider-man and maybe something what that donny cates has been working on because uh, i don't recognize the character turns out it's just um uh basically a character that is like um, like morphogenic plasma or plastoid or, or something um to that effect we've got him talking to to juggernaut right here and he says uh juggernaut says come on i'm 
fighting snot over here, which is you know just a great way of putting it. Um, and they're trying to identify the attacker, and they say it's a malleable plastic android named Primus, created by Arnim Zola. A malleable plastic android. So basically, it's just like a ripoff of the uh, the T1000, I think it was in the uh, in Terminator 2. I can't remember that Terminator's designation, but you guys know what I'm talking about. So I do like that this thing uh, manages to defeat uh, Juggernaut very handily, just completely encases him and takes away his oxygen supply, and you can't move your muscles if you don't have oxygen, even if you do have the powers of the, the gem, or the ruby of Cytorak, and so then we get our look at Zola here doing the classic uh, robot thing. I do love the um, the way that this looks, very much reminds me of Captain America Winter Soldier, which we just uh, talked about a minute ago, and so this guy is apparently, or Zola is apparently collecting different creatures and stuff. You can see like a troll and stuff here in the background trying to uh, grab their powers, he says. As you can see, recent skirmishes have filled my coffers with trolls and elves and that ilk, but since Krakoa became an isolated nation, uh, nation, mutants are much harder to come by. Surely a man such as yourself would understand the links one would go to to acquire power. I do love that we're getting more references to Krakow in there, just kind of showing how it's impacting uh, the greater Marvel Universe there um, on Earth, and um, how it's like, it's, <laughs> Artem Zola wants to kidnap some mutants, but they're a little harder to come by now. Kind of a weird implication. Uh, so here we have a flashback to a couple months ago where uh, Kane is making his way through a one storage facility to get him the remnants of the gem of Saitorak, he says here uh, I'm going to get what I came for considering it was ripped out of my body. It's not yours to have. Uh, chips and dust are all that's left of the gem of Saitorak, but they still contain a power. And then I love this next page. It makes me just laugh. So he opens the, the box with all like the dust and, and pieces of it and like takes a big old sniff like he's some kind of coke fiend or like um like Al Pacino's character in, in Scarface. He's got a big old pile of blow sitting on his desk and sticks his face in it. Uh, that's just the image that I get right here, and he just takes a big ol' huff, big ol' snort, big ol' bump of, of Jim of Cytorak, and, and gets all powered up, and then we hear um, the god talking to him. He says, does my avatar on Earth return to me? Our link has been weakened, Kane Marco, but our uh, bond remains forged in blood and pain. It is time again to do what you do best in the name of Cytorak. Uh, unleash destruction. And so, uh, we go back to our present day fight here, D Cell and their two uh, other characters there uh, haven't heard from Kane Marco. He is uh, not registering anywhere, and so she does the thing herself and jumps out of the um, out of the airplane. Of course, she can't just land. She uses her uh, deceleration powers to stop herself. I do love that we're seeing down here that she isn't as uh, proficient with her powers yet. It takes her a minute, and she wishes she had slowed down a little bit more. She even says here, "Have to work on my superhero landing." She's kind of showing. Showing how um, how green this character is. Back down here in the lab, we see Kane all tied up with Primus, and then uh, D Cell making her way into the lab as Arnim Zola does him some villain speechifying, gets his monologue on. He says, um, She is a commodity, Mr. Marco talking about D Cell, uh, as is anyone with power, and indeed the very nature of power itself. We both, uh, we both know that to be true. I have studied and I have sought to understand it, as if you have uh, not, in talking about him abusing power. Uh, Primus, please prepare him for study. Mr. Marco, can you claim to seek redemption and strive to make amends, uh, but that won't change what you have done. I do not apologize for yearning for power, nor do I harbor guilt for the loss of the textbooks which have served to feed my mind. Of course, when he hesitates on the word textbooks, he's looking for a way of describing the subjects that he's experimented on as uh, something that is um, a little bit more palatable, which is very interesting because maybe it's says to us, the audience, that he may not may not be 100% um, okay with what he's done in the past since he's trying to soften the blow in the way that he is uh, explaining it there. So D-Cell uh, jumps in there, tries to make the attack, but it 
doesn't go well. Uh, Primus gets the one up on her very, very quickly. Again, they say she is a mutant, and again, she is adamant that she is not a mutant. I can't remember right off if they have explained how she got her powers yet or not. Um, I'd be very curious to see if she actually is a mutant, and we just don't know about it, or if she does know about it, and is just wanting to uh, deny that to herself. Um, so they get her on the table, and Kane, or um, I'm sorry, uh, Zola is going to cut into her brain to try and figure out what's going on. He says down here, determining a specimen's biological status as a mutant requires a specific in in uh, inspection of the hippocampus, and that often requires some excavating. And then at that, uh, you can see Juggernaut down here is not having any of that, and he's going to break out of his uh, container here in a minute. Now, this is what I wanted to call out, what I really, really like about him, uh, Kane kind of throwing away his past. Uh, Saitorak is saying, it's time again, K. Marco, to do what you do best in the name of Saitorak, unleash destruction. And he says, no. <laughs> and Saitorak's like, w w what do you mean, no? Th that that's what we do. You're here, the juggernaut. That's what you do. And he says, I am not your avatar anymore. I'm not linked to you now. The harness is made from bands of Cytorak that existed on the earthly plane. Your access to your your ability to access the gem is gone. You're cut off from any links to a human host on Earth. And he's like, Then why are you talking to me? And Juggernaut says, I'm not. I'm on Earth, uh, coming to terms that um, that I am a finally free. I'm done serving madmen and gods. Every choice from now on, for good or bad, is going to be my own. I absolutely love it. So then we go back to the present here. He is trying to save D-Cell. Says, move away from her, Zola. Not quite as impactful as get away from her, you bitch, from the classic aliens, but it gets the point point across. He busts out of the um, the tube there and goes and saves D-Cell. And then I do love that D-Cell is like... Uh, being uh, admir or, uh, admiring what um, Juggernaut is doing here. He pulled off the, the gas lines, the cryogenic gas lines from these other tubes and uses it to freeze Primus so they can get away. I um, really, really dig that. So as they are defeating Zola, he says that he too is a prisoner enslaved to the uh, action of the architects of the dungeon. And then he says over here, the dungeon um, is a for-profit supervillain prison, right? And he asked Arnim to tell him where it is. And he says, if I do, um, they're going to kill me. And then that's when Juggernaut says, I'm going to go knock on the door and they're going to invite me in. So hopefully issue five is going to have some pretty awesome action as they roll in there and wreck shop. Um, uh, on the on the dungeon and we get some more great character stuff for the juggernaut here so guys i've been really pleasantly surprised with this mini series this one could have easily been just a throwaway uh just to keep the character in the zeitgeist there in in um or in the um, in the know there and in marvel comics but they've put a lot of work into the character here and i hope this new status quo for juggernaut changes and i'm very much looking forward to the final issue in this five issue mini series next month so guys what did you think about this one let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below guys thank you so much for watching if it's your first time here at the channel and you enjoyed this video do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button for me it would absolutely mean a lot also if you'd like to support the channel in the description box down below there are a few ways of doing that again if you feel so inclined until next time guys we'll see you at the comic shop